Alrighty, everybody. We're coming back at you. We're going to make another video. So, I apologize profusely that we haven't made a video in quite some time. Um, a few factors. Um, number one is this month was my mom's passing last year was in this month um so it's been rather tough on the family so and really tough on me so that's the reason why i haven't brought out or done much videos um and the wifey has been not feeling very good so there's always there's been that as well but i feel good i miss you guys and to feel better i i read your guys's comments again and that does give me motivation to continue and to work on these projects it is absolutely brutal outside it's 21 and then i think with the wind chill it's even worse um snow it's gross so me and the wifey organized this spare bedroom, so I don't know how much you guys can and cannot see, but we've completely organized this place so that it is going to be our winter wonderland so that we can bring you guys content, whatever we can, just to get us all through the winter times. So that is the goal. So what I'm about to do is start to organize and clean up all the plastic pieces for the 79 Trans Am. That's what I got on the go right now. Um, we're going to bring some more content through other things, but this is what I felt like working on right now because I'm really digging this Trans Am. It just, it brings happiness to me. And so what we picked up, because it's plastic, not just, but the grass, uh, grease and wax remover so that we can prime our stuff. And just to let you in on what it's like living in Dawson Creek, BC, Canada, is just a pump action bottle so that we can spray this stuff on the product before we primer it was $120 just for a stupid little plastic pump. Um, so yeah, we're going to figure out something a little bit different, but the product that we got, hopefully you can see that all right, but I talked to my guy, Bob, and when it comes to plastic, you need plastic primer. So we got this flex fill multi-purpose filler for plastic bumpers and fiberglass. So that the wife had picked up a lot of cans. So that's what we're going to be using. So what we're going to be doing is just getting everything sanded, prepped, and ready to go for that kind of a deal. As you can see, some of these pieces are not in that great of shape. But the good news is, is my buddy Bob at his shop has all the stuff that we need to fix this. So all we're going to do is get these sanded and ready to go for primer, and then we'll take it in and any of the plastic that is broken or missing things. We'll be able to fix them before we apply the primer. Now, he also said when we're doing this kind of a thing, try to keep as much of the paint and primer on there as possible. You do not need to sand these directly down to the plastic. As long as they're scuffed and ready to go, then that is what the filler is for. You do not need to go straight down. It's not like the steel where to do the proper thing, you need to go right down the steel. You don't. You just need to clean these up wherever there's damage will repair and fix and go from there so that's what bob said now we've been taking razor blades 
and we'll show you once the wifey feels better we'll show you a bit more on that how to prep them so that because we just put them on glass and we just fold the edge up a little bit and then to pull off all the decals it just makes for a lot easier of a job a lot better if you get into the plastic don't fret you can sand it clean it up do what you need to do like it doesn't have to be perfection as you can see i scraped off a lot of the trans am that was on there the rear decal i got that all taken care of so that we can get this party started i got some the wifey actually found me some gloves that somewhat work so that's a positive we got a razor blade to clean off all the decals because it makes for a nightmare to try to sand through that so we just took a razor blade and as you can see just started to scrape everything off there's a little bit of glue left but you can take whatever you want get rid of that or just scuff it up whichever works for you i'm not saying this is the ultimate way your way could be different be bought down below tell us what you worked what works for you um i'm just kind of doing this by the seat of my pants because i want to and i want to learn i want to enjoy everything so this is just going to get us started i want you guys to tell us what is more feasible for you guys do you want to see us go through the entire process of cleaning it sanding it getting it primered and ready for paint you just want to see us or just have it done then with primer on what kind of steps do you guys want to see a lot of people like to see a step by step i don't want to have to just fast forward through the entire process and, and all that kind of a thing i want you to be a part of this so you tell us what you want us to see our channel's not big enough to to dominoes playing to put up an hour long videos like vice grip or more ski or make it custom or fibs fabrication like all those guys that have you know 80 hundred thousand two two hundred thousand three hundred thousand subs we're just not there yet but where we are is a really good foundation of our supporters and you guys mean the world to both the wifey and I you you have no idea how incredible you guys are with the comments and just the support has been incredible so that's enough monologuing so what I did with these is I took the razor blade. This had a bunch of tar and tire and everything else on all of these. So we've been trying to clean this stuff up the best that we can. And then it'll just be, you know, basically scuffing the paint. Now, I don't know how well this is going to show up, but you can see in the light hopefully you can see let me see on how badly these pieces are so hopefully we can get the sanding done and then once we get the primer on there and then do a final sand so that they're ready for the primer and then eventually for paint so i mean all this stuff by hand i really can't imagine that we can oh and i'm using 220 sandpaper wet and dry sandpaper to get this started and so i mean it's just all by hand do the best you can just try not to go through the paint and the primer we're just basically wanting to scuff it up and make it ready for the primer because i mean a lot comes off with very little with very little freaking effort so i mean as long as we can get it ready for our primer and get that going we're laughing 
and you just need this special primer for this. So we're just going to sand all these stuff down, all these pieces, and make them ready to go. It sands off pretty easy, but see, I gotta take it into take it into Bob, and then get him to look at it to make sure that I'm doing it right. Because there's a lot, like hopefully you can see a lot of stress cracks and stuff like that of it just being plastic. So I mean, if we can clean it all up, make it look proper, and then get the primer on there, and then get it sanded and looking good. I think that's a win, about the best we can do, because I mean, I can't imagine what it would cost to get a shop to do this. So if we can put some of our own sweat equity in this thing to save a bunch of money and bring it back to life, I just think it's a win. And a lot of people don't like the sanding. I find it very relaxing. I like to be able to see what I've done. I like to be able to see progression. I, it's just the way that I'm built. I love seeing it. I love being a part of it. I love seeing what you've done in that day and that time. Because I mean, I can see that the, the glue is coming off now already. And so for us to be able to work inside instead of what it is out there right now is very, very pleasant because it is not pleasant outside at all. But I just, I find this very, very soothing. Um, it's been a really rough few weeks. So to be able to just sit down here, make a video with you guys, and share what is going on is huge. I really, really enjoy it. I've been sitting outside looking at the vehicles, and they're all covered in snow and all winterized, and it's just like, oh, I want to be out there pulling wrenches on this stuff and seeing what I'm working on, what I'm doing. But this stuff needs to get done too. And it is time consuming. And I just like the process. I like doing the work and then seeing your end deal. I absolutely love that. I love the thought of that. So if that's what it takes to bring us back to life, instead of just buying brand new freaking pieces, I'm all for it. I am all for it. I got lots of sandpaper. So it'll just be hitting it and making it happen. But we just, I want you guys to let us know what you want to see, what you don't want to see, what's entertaining, what's not. <clears throat> To look at me, you wouldn't know, but I have a master's degree. I know you wouldn't guess it, but it's a master's degree in paint by numbers. And I do a really, really good job at it. So that's basically where I am at because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. <coughs> I talk to the people that I know that do know what they're doing. And then I just run from there and then bring you people for our journey and so hopefully you guys are enjoying this stuff as much as I am because I love it. I love getting my hands dirty. I love seeing what you can do. I watch a lot of different YouTubers and I enjoy them all. I think everybody has something to give. Maybe, well, yeah, I believe everybody has something to give. So to be a part of that, to see what we can accomplish as a group, I was 
I really like Uncle Tony's Garage. Well, there's a huge list. But he introduced me to a guy called Kiwi's Classic and Customs. I've been talking with him. Man, I really like that guy. I really, really like that guy. So I've been in contact with him, watching his videos, leaving comments, trying to support his channel. The way that those guys bring vehicles back to life is, I think, incredible. I think he's a brilliant man and deserves props for keeping these things on the road and keeping it as honest as you can because there's not a lot of that left anymore of just people doing the right thing, not trying to, you know, burn somebody over like the one video on Uncle Tony's Garage that was at Kiwi Shop, if you've seen it, was that beautiful F100 Ford pickup truck. And the outside looked beautiful until you started actually getting into it. And it's just like, how can a shop like that leave that to a customer? It's absolutely beyond me. Like, it's just, I don't get that. Like, I mean, if you're building something for yourself, just so that you can drive it, enjoy it, like, let's say, DD Speed Shop, or more skis, or, you know, Uncle Tony's Garage, those kinds of lines. When you're just building something, because it beats having it crushed, so you're just building something to put on the road so that you can enjoy it, that's one thing. But when you're getting charged 70, 80,000 American for this kind of stuff, and you're pulling it up, you know, you take it to a shop that actually cares, and it's horrible. Well, I just, I, I can't wrap my head around that. And so while I'm sending this, people, all I'm trying to do is just feel, because the biggest thing with this is you got to blend. you got to blend. You can't leave, like as you see here, hopefully you guys can see the regular plastic and then the the paint, you have to blend that in. Like this has a big groove in it. So I'm gonna sand that as best I can and then take it to Bob and see if I gotta put a little filler in that. I don't know. Like maybe a little plastic, I, I'm not 100% sure, but there's like a, a fairly decent groove in there. So all this stuff I'm gonna learn and pick up and whatever I learn, whatever you guys have learned, share it. I'm going to share it. And we can just bring this hobby to more people. And I mean, we got to get out there. We got to, it don't matter if it's a 79 Trans Am or my 72 Chevelle or the 62 Impala or the 63 Saratoga Bob Shaw or my 85 Dodge pickup truck. Let's just get out there and create some more memories and have some fun. Realize that there's more to life than just going to work and paying bills. We got to enjoy life. We got to bring our families along, our friends for the journey. If you don't have one of these, maybe one of your friend does. Go and, and talk with them. Bring over... A, case of sandwiches or whatever and just talk about it and pull some wrenches it doesn't have to be specific to just these i mean maybe you're into horses maybe you're into gardening whatever it is find somebody to share it with and enjoy it i mean life is freaking serious let's live it instead of only just trying to get through it. That's just my thought process on the whole thing. Because, I mean, like, and it, I get it. It's easy to say because I'm saying this now and with my mom's loss, it wiped me out. And I've been wiped out for the last two weeks, two and a half weeks. 
I, I've been wiped out. And then eventually you just got to be like, hey, you know what? I can sit here and feel sorry for myself or be broken. Or I can physically change something in my head and my body and be like, hey, let's just come out and spend 20 minutes. 20 minutes, people, that's nothing. That's nothing. 20 minutes to come out and find something you enjoy and try to get out of your head for a little bit. To me, that's that's huge. We, we got to get out of our head a little bit and just enjoy what we're doing. Whether for me, it's this stuff. It's my wife. It's my kids. It's my family. It's my friends. I enjoy them so much. And so to be able to come out and work on this or spend time with my son, Nick, or spend time with my son, Alex, or their families, whatever it works out to be. I went out and hung out with my son a few days ago and just, just me and him was going out for driving, looking at a few different things and, and just having a really good conversation and visit with my son. And that's huge important people, it's huge important. So just try to get out of the, some of the cesspool that is life and that drags you down, complicates you and turns you into a bubbling mess. Get out of that for a little bit. Find something that you can just enjoy, whether it's sitting here sanding a piece of plastic for your Trans Am, or we, I don't do ice fishing, but that's all it's left right now in this town. I don't do that, but if that's what you enjoy, do it. Just grab some family, friends, get out there do it. Um, I'm going to probably start letting this one go. It's been a few minutes. I just needed to get a video out for you guys, let you know where we're at. The wife is not feeling good. She will be back. And then we can tackle some more of this. And uh, you tell us what you guys, what you want. What do you guys want? Do you want me to do some, bring it back, you know, speed it up. Like, what did you guys want? Let us know. And uh, we will definitely make it happen for you guys because we appreciate you. We love you very much. Um, all the comments, it's just been incredible. You guys are an incredible freaking rush. So I'm going to let you go. You guys have a great day. And um, just be bop down below. And... Um, up up there, down. up up there, up up there, show the people, there you go, I don't know if you can see her there, she is, oop, I caught that, but yep, yeah, just um, stay tuned, we will be back, I will have some other videos for you guys, um, dog one's going to work today, but she is like, nope, that's uh, peon work, so, so it's beneath her, so I love you all, you guys have a great day. And um, God bless, and we will talk to you soon. All right, bye-bye. Two by two with blue gloves. I can't remember if that's the two by two with blue. I don't know. I can't remember. It's off a movie. What movie is that from? I, I, uh, it's pretty bad talking, but two by two with blue gloves. What movie is that from? All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.